Welcome to the IT free training video on the DNS server settings found in Microsoft DNS Server. Knowing what settings are available will allow you to fine tune the results given by your DNS server to match the needs of your network. I will now change to my Windows 8 computer with remote server administration tools installed to look at the DNS server options that are available. To access DNS Manager, I will move to the top right of the screen to open Charms. From Charms, select the Search option, and you can then see the icon Administrative Tools at the top left. Once I open Administrative Tools, I need to go down through the tools and open DNS. Once DNS Manager has opened, I next need to right-click the server that I want to configure the options on. If your DNS server does not appear, you will need to select the file menu and add the DNS server. Next, I need to select Properties to open the properties for the DNS server. The options that I am interested in can be found on the Advanced tab. I now will go through each option one by one. The first option is Disable Recursion also disables forwarders. This is off by default, which essentially means the DNS server, when asked a query it does not know, will attempt to find out the answer. If this option is put on, this will prevent the DNS server from contacting other DNS servers in order to answer the query. If you have a DNS server that is on a network that is not intended to contact other DNS servers for answers, for example, the DNS server is on a secure network, you should consider enabling this option. Doing this prevents a denial of service attack. This is when an attacker sends a large number of requests at the DNS server at once. Since the DNS server is so busy trying to resolve these illegitimate requests, it prevents it from resolving legitimate requests. If you have a DNS server configured to contact the root hints server to resolve the client DNS queries, or it is configured to forward DNS requests to another DNS server, this will be disabled when you enable this option. If the DNS server cannot answer the query using data on the DNS server, the client will receive a message stating the DNS query could not be resolved. The next option that I will look at is Enable Bind Secondaries. If your DNS server replicates with bind servers that are below bind 4.9.4, you will need to enable this option. Enabling this option disables some fast transfer options for zone transfers, and thus enabling this will slow down zone transfers. 4.9.4 of Bind was released in the late 90s, and currently they are up to version 9, with version 10 due to be released in the next year. For these reasons, unless you are using a very old Unix-based system, it is very unlikely that you will ever need to enable this option. The next option is Fail on Load if Bad Zone Data. If enabled, this will cause the zone file to not load if there are any errors in the data of the zone. For example, if a DNS record contained any illegal characters. If you enable this option and your zone file becomes corrupted for any reason, this will prevent the zone from loading and thus prevent the DNS server answering queries for that zone. The next option is Enable Round Robin. This option is enabled by default, but only comes into effect when there are multiple records that exist with the same name. When this occurs, the records will be returned in sequence, which provides very basic load balancing. To understand how this works, Consider a DNS server which has two DNS records on it. The first one is an A record for www. The second one is once again an A record for www. DNS allows you to have more than one DNS record with the same name. However, this time it has a different IP address to the first one. Now consider that you have four computers on the network which ask to resolve the record www one after the other. The first computer will obtain the first DNS record on the server. When the DNS server receives the request to resolve www from the second computer, the DNS server will give the second computer the second DNS record. When the third computer asks to resolve www, 
The DNS server has no more records for www, so it will go back to the first DNS record. When the fourth computer asks for the www record, it will receive the second DNS record. You will notice that half the computers will obtain one DNS record and half the second. Using DNS round robin allows very simple load balancing. It is called simple because it only load balances based on the requests it receives. It does not consider other factors like how much load the server is currently under. If you disable round robin, the DNS server will always return the first DNS record it finds in the zone file. The next option is Enable Net Mask Ordering. When this option is enabled, the DNS server will attempt to return DNS records that are in the same network as the client. To understand how this works, consider that you have two networks. In each of these networks is a web server that you want to respond to requests for www. If you have two clients on the first network, the first client will contact the DNS server asking for the IP address of www. It will obtain the IP address of the server on the first network. Now we just learned that when DNS round robin is enabled and there are multiple DNS records with the same name, these DNS records will be returned in sequence. When you have net mask ordering enabled, notice that the second desktop computer will obtain the same DNS record. Net mask ordering will always attempt to return a DNS record in the same network as the client when multiple DNS records exist, even when round robin is also enabled. Net mask ordering and round robin do work together. To understand how, I will add a third web server to the second network. I will also add two desktop computers to this network. Like before, when the first desktop asks for the www server, the DNS server will attempt to give it a record that is in the same network as the desktop. You will notice, however, that when the second desktop attempts to query the same name, this time round robin will kick in because there are two records in the same network and this time the second desktop will be directed to the second web server. You can see how net mask ordering and round robin work together. If multiple clients query the same www record and net mask ordering could not match the network with the IP address of the client, then round robin would cycle through all three of the DNS records in turn. On most networks, it is a good idea to leave round robin and net mask ordering on. The next option is Secure Cache Against Pollution. This setting is on by default and helps prevent false records from being added to the cache. To understand why, consider that you have an attacker on the network who has a fake website they want people directed to. A form of attack is for the attacker to ask the DNS server the address of a website. The DNS server does not know the address, so what it will do is ask another DNS server. What the attacker will do now is send multiple responses back to the DNS server, trying to make these responses look like legitimate responses from a DNS server answering the original query. When the responses from the query come back, the attacker is hoping their response will be accepted and not the response from the other DNS server. What has happened is the fake DNS record is now in the cache of the DNS server. When a client requests the DNS record, they will obtain the fake DNS record and be directed to the attacker's website rather than the correct website. Having secure cache against pollution helps to prevent this kind of attack. This option is enabled by default and should be left on. The last option that I will look at is Enable DNS Sec Validation from Remote Responses. This option is only available on Windows Server 2012 and is enabled by default. DNS Sec is a system that allows a client to validate a DNS record. This essentially means that the client can check the DNS record returned by the DNS to ensure that it has not been tampered with. DNSSEC can also be used by the client to confirm that a DNS record does not exist. This prevents an attacker telling the client a DNS record does not exist when it does and thus causing a denial of service attack.
If you enable this option, it allows the DNS server to use DNSSEC options. Well, that covers it for the server options available in Windows DNS. If you liked this video, please feel free to check out our other free videos available from IT Free Training. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.